to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Good morning, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for all these that are here around these tables. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve those that need serving. Thank you, dear Lord, for giving us the hearts to do just that. Bless us this week, dear Lord, as we go about to do your will. For in Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, Rotarians. Good morning, sir. We have a nice crowd this morning. Fantastic. Uh, Ron Leach, are we covered okay this morning? Uh, yes, we're 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 had, okay. We had no intruders. In fact, I had backup from the Colonel. Okay, good deal. We got everything. I'm talking about the place he works or his legs. Well, but he's covered <laughs> part of it. Okay. Uh, our guest will have an official introduction to the guest in a few minutes. Uh, be sure, Richard, you're worried about his money. So if you have to pay for food, fine. Please do. Please do. Uh, I've got an issue. Very much. A couple of little minor issues. Issues. We and it's it's a very sensitive thing this morning. We have a member that is concerned. His name is not on the bulletin, and he's been oh, duly no. installed no. in our club. No. no. Yes. Say it's so I can't say believe it's this not so. is happening. It's my so. uh, Lynn, Oh sir, come on. Are you okay with this? I know we'll have to correct it. Uh, Rick, Ron, I always have issues on the back page. Uh, who's responsible for that writing page? That's what I thought. We need a dollar out of you. Surprise to me. Uh, uh, hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good morning. Good. Glad to see you. Thank you. Good morning. There we go. Good deal. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Wayne Honeycutt. Freedom of Harvest. Yeah, glad to be Great. Nice to see you. Good deal. Nice to have you. If you want to introduce yourself, please. Just sure. Sure. Um, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's nice to see you all this morning. My name is Rita Purvis, and I work in the Career Center here at Little Ron. We're on the second floor of the library. I also do a work with community service. So I coordinate hands on people when our freshman students got volunteer. And I just want to help you be able to connect to them if you like to employ them in your businesses or if you have opportunities for them to volunteer because they're going to. Um, classroom Connection for Hands on Hickory, and um, Donald invited me to come this morning, and also has invited me in the past to join you. So, thank you for allowing me to join you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions about the Hickory Hall? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
was, um, unless somebody wants to leap in and has actually done the crossword, you can tell me. No, okay. Uh, what did what, the what, what, what do you mean has actually? Does that imply that you have not actually? No, it doesn't apply that at all. And okay. I, I resemble that incineration. Incineration. <laughs> <laughs> what did the Dalai Lama tell the hot dog vendor? <laughs> Oh, Rick knows. One with everything. Yeah, give me one with everything. <laughs> hey! Great! Very fantastic. And he didn't even do the first No, no. I haven't done it yet. Uh, fantastic. Just gave him my hand. I was yeah. 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 It's make me one with everything. Well, well that's close enough. That's pretty close. Yeah. Austin, do you have anything this morning? You're okay on the fun part. Yes. Okay. So I, mean, I had a blast. Thanks, uh, All right. Good how, how, many, <laughs> how many of us have, have taken a 10 pound can to the soup kitchen? There was a request made for that. Yeah, it was on Facebook. I didn't, I didn't make it. Okay, I didn't know who else had seen it. No. Soup Kitchen could use one pound cans, or ten pound cans of fruits or vegetables. As soon as the uh, live season is over, then they have to fall to that to keep their, their plate full. Okay. We've, awesome. take, we've taken corn that. and green yeah, beans. Yeah, you can drop them off anytime between 7.30 and 2.30, or I can come and get them. Okay, okay. sure. Thanks, Bob. All right, good. So that, okay. that would be like... In like the interest of time, we have the program. So I'll turn it back over to our president and let him take it from there. Okay. Um, Brother Phil, you had one comment. Go ahead. I was just going to ask, is that the size like we get at Sam's? Yes. That's the size you're Yeah, the for. bigger ones. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. all. Thank you all. Okay. Um, also, uh, Mr. Honeycutt, yes. there's another error on the back of here that egregious error. Well, I saw another one too, but I didn't want to go into you know, the details. You, know, you, didn't, you didn't want to break me. I, the other the secretary gets real sensitive. Okay, I, I, I tell you what, he 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 is such a value to me. I won't. We won't tell. Won't yeah, he needs to look over there. I'll, I'll share it with him. Okay. We we have some members that maybe need to be removed from this. And other things. Yes. And other things. All right, and other things. So yes. Like I said this morning, he's real sensitive. I don't yeah. want to get him upset. He All right. Had a two dollar bill. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, introduction of the program, uh, Mr. Kenny Hunt. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all this morning? Very well. Good morning. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Colonel Moose. He is the director, head honcho, the man, apparently Mr. Incredible <laughs> over at Hickory High School's ROTC program. And this is what my wife says we're trying to be. <laughs> But uh, I will tell you this, I have seen what he does with kids that don't have any any idea in life or any idea what they're going to do, and he turns them around. And I'd like to introduce him. He's got a program for us this morning. Great. I appreciate Kenny asking me to join you. I think it's been two years. Was that here two years ago? I think it's been two years. I remember the CBCC. I remember some folks from CBCC. Um, so between, this is my sixth year at Hickory High School, I retired uh, from the Army in 2013, December 2013. My first year there was, uh, was actually pretty rough, it's pretty rough, and uh, just mainly frustrations and patience. It wasn't that hard per se, but just dealing with a lack of respect, a lack of uh, a different environment for me, and I, and I had some mentors to kind of prepare me for that a little bit, but you got to get through it. But, uh, so I used to complain a little bit. <coughs> probably more than a little bit. But uh, God's changed my heart in the last three years probably to where that I believe that I've never questioned whether we as teachers or uh, men and women that develop young people that were needed, no one ever questions that at all. Uh, but that's become my mission really. It's given me a new purpose in life. Uh, you know, it's hard to kind of step down. I was actually retired Lieutenant Colonel with it. Colonel, but I appreciate, but uh, but that's okay, uh, Lieutenant Colonel. But you know, I'm used to having first sergeants and majors and colonels yelling at me and so forth. And uh, and now I got something similar, but just little kids. But uh, <laughs> that's my heart. I do care about them. I'm, I'm at the stage of life now where some of those have graduated. They're in college. They're doing some of them are doing some really good things, and they come back and they love to say hello. And that 
that's a big reward. That's a big pat on the back. And so I'm finally, in the last two years, probably getting to see some big, big fruits of, of that work, especially with having my second graduating class from when I came in uh, five years ago. So I believe now that junior ROTC at the high schools is, uh, everybody needs it, uh, all the kids, not just the challenging kids, which is, I probably have about 75, 80% challenging kids, uh, and then I have 20% that, well, 5% that know what, they, that think they know what they're going to do. But uh, everybody kind of needs it. The rich kids, the IB kids, the AP kids, the everybody. And so uh, we get a taste of that. Uh, but for the most part, we have challenging students. And uh, we do give them purpose and direction. And we find a way to meet them. So I've been able to, to work and learn and grow to how, to how to meet this young 14, 15. Some of them are 14, uh, 14, 15 year olds that are just mad at the world and uh, somehow somehow find some way to connect with them. Usually it's on a hiking trip or a whitewater rafting trip or cooking, uh, feed them hot dogs that Kenny makes for us or something like that. Uh, so anyway, I just want to let you know I believe, I'm a believer in what we do now. I know Rick's been, he's been around us a couple years, uh, maybe more than two, but he's been, uh, he's been at several of our events, Kenny's been at several of our events, and I recognize a lot of people. So what I just want to do is just uh, show you about a 10 minute video. Uh, this is last year, so this is pretty fresh. And I may pause one or two just to uh, kind of tell you briefly uh, an impact that we made on the student. But, uh, Rick and Kenny have seen this, uh, but uh, I felt like this might be something. And I want you to know uh, we partnered with the Sunrise Rotary for probably four, four or five years, maybe? Yeah, no, At least four, because my first year I was introduced to, uh, to Rick by the, uh, my, the person, the, Dr. Stalnecker, and uh, and then I was like, wow, I didn't know about the better stand down here in Hickory. It's probably just moved here. So I was like, I got to get involved in that. And so that's our main service learning project, the better stand down. And so we do have a partnership with uh, Sunrise Rotary. And, uh, and you have sponsored us for the last several years. And so this is what some of the things we do with, with some of the donations and things that we get. Okay, I'll go ahead and explain this. I'm going to try to get a little bit of music going too. Music's going to be best I can do. This is the traveling wall. The city of Conover came to me somehow. Somebody gave them their name and they said, we want you to lead this for the first day of the traveling wall. She is 100% Vietnamese. She's in Vietnam right now. She's met several mayors and she has an awesome story. And so she was our guest speaker for the first day of the Vietnam travel wall in Conover last year. A lot of the city folks have three fourths of them have never been hiking in the woods up there. At least half. Who is this guy here? <laughs> He's my chief cook. <laughs> my chief cook. You got a picture of Kenny on that rope? <laughs> they got a big nerve. I work on that. Actually, I do. I got a big one. It is high risk rafting with high school students. You are gonna lose some teeth? I'm telling you, they, they are. You ever you ever wear that uh, just kind of challenge? So the white water rafting high school students. This one here, he's the first one to jump off a hundred foot tower. He's autistic. He's uh, the, the bravest person to have an ROTC. Other students jumped right after him. Well, they can eat. They can eat. 
Kenny's son's actually very involved. You know who his son is. He's in a lot of pictures. He's very involved. We try to do at least two college visits. Sometimes we do up to six. A year. We also participate in Appalachian States. They call it, they call it uh, Military Appreciation, Appreciation Day. That's called Heroes Appreciation Day. We have a key role in that uh, this year also. That's a big help too. So Kenny introduced me, or he kind of got this going for me about three or four years ago. And uh, so I, the ideas that come from this group and others really help me get some good service projects. And that's a big service project too. We'll do another here. Pete Martinez is my favorite here. Here we go, Pete Martinez. Thank you. So we know the former police chief, Tom Atkins, he, he always comes around and says, hey, he's been our guest speaker before at RTC. This was a new uh, project that my substitute came up with, and uh, sending care packages to Afghanistan. So I saw I had some connections, and that was, uh, that was really nice. They sent some pictures back to us, so they got to see the, you know, the receiving end of the chair packages. The Junior RTC cadets not only organize and run the blood drive, we're the biggest supporters of giving blood also. That's my daughter, we got her. Pilot there is the Air Force. I can't remember his name. He flew into Da Nang, Da Nang, which is where Yin Von is from. And so she heard that, and they connected. And we're supposed to have a big interview with our public affairs officer because uh, a story he shared about her hometown, where she is right now. She hasn't been back in about five years. Oh, another high risk activity. If you really want to question your uh, your faith in a higher being, come snow skiing with us also. <laughs> I'm my own PAO, I'm my own photographer, so I'm actually have to do this because they can't ski. <laughs> See, they can't ski. <laughs> so, triple high risk is taking videos, skiing backwards, and trying to avoid being hit by cadets. You'll start to see them fall like flies. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are on the black slopes for chance. Well, a few of them, I took a few of them up there. A few of them, only a couple. I was without a first sergeant for most of the year. First Sergeant McAllister, he's a new uh, member of the team. He came in in uh, March. How much extra time does this drill team put in? So when First Sergeant McAllister got here uh, in early March, we, he's a former drill sergeant, so he, uh, we did five days a week for about three weeks, because we only had three weeks before our competition. So uh, this year was a little bit challenging because I, was, I didn't have a First Sergeant with me for the majority of the year. This is at West Arnold High School. West Arnold does a great job with hosting. And they won this competition. About 12 schools, 12, 14 schools.
really tough. I mean, I was tough, but it's not really expensive. Mm -hmm. Uh, first day lab, so on Thursdays we apply, but usually Thursday, depending on the weather, we apply something we've learned that week. So that's something that uh, our curriculum basically has a lot of classes. So I cut the classes in half, and then if we don't get out and apply it in some type of situation or something that it just it doesn't have that meaning. I'm going to go back to Pete Martinez because this is my favorite song when we uh, serve with the veterans here. Thank you. This is where I wanted to match it up. So again, this is our largest service learning project. The only thing we've really done that, might have, that really is similar to this is we've only been to Washington, D.C. once to serve the honor flight veterans in Colorado, where I used to, where I used to live with my girl. You notice that gentleman there, he used to have a lot of hair. He kept toning it down, and then they couldn't the more. It takes him a while. Uh, you guys know that she was the oldest veteran there. Oldest veteran there. The Army actually, I don't know, they say they don't have any money, but then we got 15 air rifles, so uh, they're really nice air rifles. So that's something we're excited to get our air rifle team to win again. They came from the But uh, I know I didn't have my music coordinated there, but uh, I just wanted to show you, that's probably about two-thirds of what we, what we did. Uh, we do impact lives, and I realize I've got to brag on what we do, because some people know it if they're involved, Kenny knows, others, Rick knows, they're around, they, but a lot of people just have assumptions, they don't know. And a lot of the young people need someone to believe in them, give them a kick in the rear, boys and girls, Girls too. I used to think it was just the boys, but the girls needed too, and uh, and challenge them. And uh, one more story about the lady you just mentioned, Chastity. Uh, she's a challenging lady. She I used to, she uses uh, I use the gift of gab in her to help me disseminate information, and uh, so she's a very uh, loud lady. And uh, but when I put her in charge of developing others, like yesterday, we partnered with the police department for the youth camp. They have, we have a youth leadership camp. It's a one day. It's two weeks for them, but one day is ROTC. And I got to see another side of her because when she was with 13 and 14 year old, she's 15 or 16. I think she's 16. Then she just changed. She transformed into a mature, professional young lady and leader, and an an outstanding leader. And uh, and you got to see that at the banquet as well. So we have many success stories. Most of the students we get, um, everybody gets a chance at ROTC the first semester. Everybody. It doesn't matter who they are. After that, if they refuse to conform in certain ways, usually uniform and certain things, uh, what we'll do is we'll, we will uh, put on the do not return list for one year. And that, that forces them to realize that it's a privilege to be an ROTC. And most of the students who had that potential come back, and they have to re come back and interview with myself or the first sergeant, and, uh, and so we'll make sure they know what they've got to correct or what they've got to show some uh, improvement or potential improvement before they come back to RTC. So I hold that carrot over them, and that works. It's very effective. The administration supports me in that, the counselors and the principal, and, uh, and then sometimes it might be a parent comes down and we have a talk, and I may change my mind, I may not change my mind, but usually. Usually I do change my mind if the parent comes down because that parent has that investment in, in obviously their son or daughter or, or their, their guardians. So it's a great program. I'm excited to, uh, to be here. I'm, uh, statistically, most uh, our junior RTC instructors don't last two years because we're just, it's, it's, it requires a lot of patience. That's the main <laughs> thing. Patience and respect that uh, it's, it's a different level of uh, humility, I guess, or I'm not sure, patience. So I'm glad that I made it five years. I'm on my sixth year. I'm not trying to say that to brag. I'm just, I, I believe in what we're doing now. My first year was a little bit challenging, but I believe in these young people. I believe that uh, they need a chance, another chance, another chance, and then some of them, you know, they have their consequences. The ones that respond, which is a high percentage, and there's a few that don't, and, uh, and then life will teach them the lessons that they, they have to learn, unfortunately. But even them, sometimes they come back 
three or four years later, they're 2022, 20, and they want to say, hey, sir, first runner, here's what I'm doing. So a lot of, a lot of good news stories. So I just want to give you a little bit of hope in our youth. They are challenging. They frustrate a lot of people, to include myself. Uh, but I have to go back and say, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe Bob and Kenny weren't the best when they were 14 either. I don't know. Maybe they got to still on. They're not the best right now. <laughs> but anyway, I, I'd be glad to open it up to any questions or comments at all, and uh, that's really, I think, what I uh, just wanted to share a little bit about this last year specifically. I want to throw a challenge out to you. Yes, sir. We have inside Rotary, and we've not had good luck with Hickory High. We've not had good luck with Hickory High because in the past we've always gotten a candidate out of the sports program and they were not willing to let them miss practice to go to Rotary Youth Leadership Award Academy. Uh, and if you have in your mind one or two who are going to be leaders, we would like to discuss the possibility of sending one or both to our YLA, RILA. That would be great. That would be great, and uh, I'll share that. Uh, not to badmouth athletics too bad, but I have a lot. There's a lot of there's a lot of people at Hickory High that have a very a narrow mindset, and they force them to choose at age 14 or 15. You will do this, and only this. And it could. And I and I was a little bit that way my first year, but I quickly learned that when you're 14 or 15 or 16, why not let you be in the band and ROTC? Why not let you be play football or lacrosse? Because about half my well, a third to a half are doing something else pretty big. Uh, football, lacrosse, cheerleading. Yvonne, oh my goodness, she's going to be the bat battalion commander one semester, and her boyfriend will probably be the battalion commander the other semester. They're <laughs> unbelievable. They're just unbelievable. But Yvonne is this little lady that uh, you saw her throughout, and she is unbelievable. And she, she, she's not cheering now, but I didn't force her to quit or anything. I encourage her to continue to cheer. And she's done athletics as well. So I... Uh, I do have to be a little flexible, and uh, and so because uh, I want them to be able to, to try those sports and things as well. So it's not all about just one one program. But I would love to uh, give you some candidates, and they could interview, apply, whatever the procedures are. The Vietnamese lady is is she a student? She's a senior this year. Senior this year. And what are the plans after here? She was uh, she's going to apply for Army ROTC scholarship. She is uh, considering. She's still figuring it out, but the latest was uh, UNC Charlotte, Army Nursing, be an Army Nurse. That's the latest. But she's she's the top. She's my she's my number. Well, she and her boyfriend, it's hard to tell. They're just they're number one and number two. They're awesome. They're they're impressive. What, what you haven't seen was the banquet. That's what our um, annual donation goes to to help make sure that banquet um, goes off when it is an out. It's a great, great, great event. I, I just can't tell you. If, if you were like a fly on the wall, just watching those kids. Some of them never get the opportunity to do anything like that. Yeah, and it's, um, <coughs> they just grow up before your eyes. It's, it's currently do a fantastic job. Thank you. Not only are they great in, in helping at the stand down, but at the veterans meal at Golden Corral, they are a tremendous help. And the help that they give at the stand down, a lot of you guys are cooking in the back and you don't get to see it necessarily, is that we pair them up. We usually get two cadets, if we have enough, with each veteran that goes through. So, so no veteran feels like he or she is, they're by themselves, uh, there's somebody with them, and, and they learn from each other. The kids really get a healthy respect for, for the veterans and, and, and in turn, uh, the veterans are grateful uh, for the help that they get throughout the stand down. I mean, that's just a marvelous thing y'all do. do. Do you know what uh, percentage go on to do something military? Do you know what percentage of the cadets actually go on to do to join the military or do something connected? Um, I can tell you the last few years. So, out of our so we have usually about 110 to 120 cadets in RTC per semester. The fall semester is a little bigger, 
I mean, we've had 181 apply or uh, request RTC, but I've capped it at 120 because we, we, we go a little bit above 120, but not much because the uniforms are just, it, it's, it's a challenge. And then we go down a little bit in numbers. Uh, usually the spring semester is about 80, 90, maybe 100. And so most of those students, half of those students don't return. Half of those just don't have the time. So a lot of those, uh, you know, take it one year, one semester or one year. And uh, by the time we get to the cadets who've taken ROTC three or four years, there's probably uh, about 10 to 15 out of that initial, let's say, 120. So I'm just kind of giving you a perspective. And out of those 10 or 15 cadets that have taken ROTC three or four years, we typically have about four or five that, that go into the military. Uh, we've had, out of the last two years, I would say we've had about 10. Uh, and then one is, uh, one is currently at the Citadel. And so I kind of count him because he's my first one to try to become an officer and, uh, and go through a commissioning program. So I don't know the exact percent, but you know about four or five mostly go enlisted, and then uh, we've got a couple now like Yvonne and, and her boyfriend. If they go to the military, they're they're planning on going the officer route, but most of them will go enlisted. So four or five a year. A young lady who wants to go to nursing, you know, something that they want to do is introduce her to the ribbon program, which is the nursing program through CBCC. Ryan's collaboration. When you finish the CBCC, you have a slot at the lower line as a nurse in I know just enough about it to be dangerous. <laughs> but, uh, you may have her to, to uh, check into the ribbon program. Okay, well, I appreciate that for my daughter also. Absolutely. My daughter has to be here <laughs> at CBCC. Good. Homeschool slash CBCC. Yes, ma'am. Do you visit LR when you do the college visits with the ribbon? Uh, we have not. Uh, I'd like you. I, I'll be there. I'll be there because we have uh, we partnered with LR for their homecoming the last two or three years, and that's the only thing. But I want to do more. And you may know this: her older brother is uh, Finn Tron. I did know Finn. Finn Tron is her older brother, and he was uh, first Fulbright. And he was the student body president, I believe, and he graduated maybe last year or the year before. Yeah. At 16, and he worked for four years in the career center as a work study student while he balanced all the other things that he did. My boss was his mentor. Yeah. So that's that's his younger sister. Unbelievable young man. Uh, I served on the board of trustees here. Actually, I just got off. And uh, quite impressive. Quite impressive. But I'll definitely uh, partner up. I, and that's one of the great things about networking and meeting great people that have organization. You know, you're part of uh, CBCC, LR, other places in your businesses. So I will be talking to you, absolutely. Yes, sir. Any, any, any way or any comparison you've ever made between the students who come through your program and what happens to similar members of their family who may not have older or younger siblings, perhaps? We actually do get a lot of, if the siblings are close to the same age, we'll, we'll get the brother or sister or two, I mean, I'll, probably 80% of the time. So we do get a lot of siblings that come in. Uh, I don't really know too many, you know, if they don't come through ROTC, I might bump into them if they come to a, a cookout or something that we do, but I don't really have a lot of knowledge of the siblings that don't come through ROTC. But we do have a lot of siblings that do come through ROTC, a lot. And so they're our, our best recruiters are the cadets. You know, I'm not the best recruiter. The cadets are our best recruiters. So uh, my first two years, I did have to recruit. I had to change some things. How we uh, the perception of our junior ROTC was a place for uh, it was a place where we we're just throwing kids uh, from the counselor. That's just my opinion. I'm not trying to badmouth the counselors, but a lot of schools have this challenging where it's a, a dumping ground for people that have no other place to go. Now it's, it's an honor to be an ROTC. It's a privilege to be an ROTC. And if, you're, if I'm talking to the parent, I'll say, sir, ma'am, it's a privilege for your son to be an RTC. And he doesn't respect that. And so I've changed that around to where it's a little bit more competitive. And, uh, and so they like that. So I've, uh, not just me, but working with others and, and doing some good things. My first, my previous first sergeant really did a good job with that. But brothers and sisters do come through RTC at a high percentage. I just can't really give you a comparison if, for those that don't come through. Uh, but we do still have some students that come through, a few, not many, maybe, maybe one or two a year, who says, I don't have anybody who's graduated from, in my family, who's graduated from high school. 
um, and uh, I used to think I was just college, no, it's high school. I thought your dad, no, my dad didn't make it through high school. My granddad didn't make it through high school. We don't have a lot of those, but I mean, we do have several of those. So, uh, and we do have, um, I think it's called Apprenticeship Catawba, but we have some students who, uh, I don't know all the partnership, but I know the lady, Krista Burns, <laughs> she does it, and she and they uh, several get scholarships to go to CDCC, and they have internships, they get paid. I don't know all the details, but I send them to this lady, Krista Burns. I think it's called Project Potential, maybe. And uh, oh, you, you probably know that. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, I know the right people to get them in touch with, and uh, and so we have several that are going to CDCC, several for this this last senior class. And we fully apply. We fully apply to you on the right club to go to CDCC. And so one of my top students this year <laughs> who's going to CDCC uh, is Eric Bencourt. He was in several of the pictures. I didn't point him out, but uh, he's a great student, and so he'll be at CDCC in August. And uh, so CDCC is a great, a great path for a lot of our students. Even my own kids, my personal kids, they a lot of students don't know what they're going to do, and you know, and even the, those that have money or possibly scholarships to go to a four-year school, uh, it's not a bad idea to grow up a little bit and figure things out. So I'm a big fan of the community college, CBCC. I don't really know much about Caldwell. I'm sure Caldwell's a good option too. But plus, plus, get a quality education. That's only right. that part. <laughs> well, my son, my son went through CBCC for a year as high school, and then my daughter's doing it right now. In fact, she's a CBCC as a, as a high school senior, taking 100 percent of her classes there, working with Miss McBride and that program too. So I'm a believer of my own kids. And then after school at CBCC, Rebecca, she comes and hangs out with us. She was actually in several pictures too with Rick. She likes doing all the cool stuff. Yeah, so she's, stuff. she's exploring whether she wants to go into the military or not. Do you have many students do JCLC? Yes, yes. Uh, and, and so I'm one, of the, I'm one of the leaders in JCLC. I'm a company commander at, uh, that's our JRTC uh, Cadet Leadership Challenge is what it stands for, but it's a, it's a five day leadership camp at, we go to Bud Shield. All the JRTC units go somewhere, Fort Jackson. South Carolina, uh, there's some other camps, some other Boy Scout camps, but we, uh, we have a cluster of about 32, 33 schools from North and South Carolina at Bud Shield in, uh, in Rutherford County. And so, yeah, we, we'll see in 10 to 15 cadets. And uh, I don't think I had pictures of that, but uh, we just got back three or four weeks, like four weeks ago. So that's a great camp, and we run it. And the great thing about that camp is, uh, you know, about 10 to 15 students from your school get to be with 10 to 15 students from about 30 other schools, and that's a great experience. And so I hold that over their head a little bit, like, it's time for you to give back. Those are our leaders when they come back to Hickory High School or their respective schools, they're really expected to step up and take a lot of lessons learned that techniques and things that they learned from these other students from these other schools and improve you know, Hickory High School, Junior RTC. So we have a big leadership, it's a big leadership camp. <coughs> Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. To thank you. Uh, please stand there. Lieutenant Colonel Moose, right? Lieutenant uh, Colonel Moose. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it? Lieutenant Colonel Moose. Yes, sir. That's it. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Kenny, get out of the way. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we can leave him. I personally believe in him. I appreciate that. I appreciate your encouragement. I really do. What we have here is an award. A man by our very own, Mr. Wayne Honey, the old Hickory of Wentworth. No, 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 no. The tariff against that told you to not afford it. So, no, no, no. This is a man by the very old Hickory. I'll send the president's answer. Part of the 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 part of the
ladies, lady and gentlemen, thank you so very much for coming. My pleasure. We want you to come a lot. Well, thank you. We really, really do. Thank you. Okay, uh, anyone else had any, any business? Yes, sir. Ms. Rick. A couple of quick things. Today is Jim and his wife's 59th Really? How we could put up with him <laughs> <laughs> that many years. I said, it's, it's amazing. Somebody got yeah. me. When I was in Okinawa, they came over. It was my daughter who was baby in arms, my wife. And she got there. She said, here, don't you ever do this to me again. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when we left, supposed to be coming back to the States, well, she and the two kids did. One in arms and one in a, in a halter, so to speak. Keep her from running away all by herself. Because I had an assignment to Thailand for a year <laughs> after three years on Okinawa. And she's a fine lady. She, uh, yes. Uh, she uh, another quick when thing. I, when I met her, she was a, a prof uh, secretary for the professor of air science at the University of Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, in 1983, she was, she went. Well, she had gone to work with, in the civil service. 1983, she was the. Let's see if we get this right. The transportation employee of the year for the Air Force. Mm -hmm. She has, has a lot. On, I don't know how she <laughs> got involved with me. It's <laughs> 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 work, Jim. You, you work on Scott Moore. She's quite a lady. Uh, last week, Bob uh, passed out the uh, an announcement about the folk moot dancing at the uh, um, Thought Block. Y'all missed something, let me tell you. And what we found out, I didn't know until Bob showed me today, uh, Rotary International sponsors this group. Wow. And um, when they come back next year, we need to make a present. I mean, I was blown away. Absolutely fan fantastic performance. I, I encourage people to, to go uh, next year. And if time permits, Mr. President, I would like to read what we put in into the bulletin for our members who are not be able to be here today. They may not see this. Yes, sir. Um, and in lieu of my uh, uh, notes from last week, instead of that, I put this in that I came upon uh, last week. It's called, Do You Just Belong? Are you an active member, the kind that would be missed? Or are you just contented that your name is on the list? So you attend the meetings and mingle with the flock, or do you meet in private to criticize and not? Do you take an active part to help the work along, or are you satisfied to be the kind that just belongs. You work on committees to this, there is no trick, trick or leave the work to just a few to talk about the clip. Please, come to the meetings often with help and help with hand and heart. Don't be just a member, but take an active part. Think this over, members. You know what's right from wrong. Are you an active member or do you just belong? Well, yeah, well, I have, Mr. President. Yes, sir, Mr. Trey. I um, I'm scheduled for the for the program yes, sir. coming up. Yes, sir. And um, in in working on our upcoming uh, vacation trip, mm -hmm. uh, permits to get into the Boundary Water Canoe Area in northern Minnesota are difficult to come by. Mm -hmm. We had to change our plans because of what was available, mm -hmm. and I can't be here for my program. I would love to switch with someone. Somebody can cover. It's, I, I realize it's very short notice. That's, that's, that's next, next week. week. Yeah. week. Uh, Mr. Prater, you want to move the club assembly up one week? Why don't we do that? That's, that's, that's a week. good idea. Can you do it the following week? No, I won't. I won't be back in town until the twenty-second. So much that okay. idea. So I let's just see if we can find something. Ron, switch with him. You've got the twenty-second. <clears throat> Take the eighth and give fill the twenty second. I'm not going to be here next week. Yeah, let, let's. Uh, I'll put it in. I'll get it out today. I promise you. Got his hand it's out. also going to be on, on the video. <laughs> but be thinking somebody who could do a program, and we'll get with you. Uh, well, Gavin, sure. Gavin and Kenny are going to do do the bulletin next, next week. Okay. So I'm going to be back. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. okay. Also, remember on the 29th, uh, we had previously. I'm glad to swap. So I thought it was September 8th. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. We do next week. Okay. Oh, great. All right. All right. I'm going to be here. Be here. I'm going to be here. But great. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Great, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm Yeah, I have my Okay, so yeah. just, just a minute. I just wanted to ask Bob before we do the before we test. This might be an opportunity for the Rotaract group at Little Ryan. Absolutely. Keep that in mind. Uh, mm -hmm. as, uh, the things we think say or do. Is it the truth? Is it their all concern? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Yeah, in the and the fifth one, will it be fun? fun. fun. In, regard, in regard to Rotaract, we need to think of a project or two that our club could sponsor where we could take in the Rotaract Club of CDCC and or a Rotaract Club from LR to work with us, because one of the things that kills Rotaract is when the club that is active around them does not include them. We need to think on that subject. There have to be a couple things we can do that would involve the youth. Paint my house. Okay. Why not? Sounds like political craft to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 